Okay, let's just check in the shipment status. Apparently it's in the US, Seattle, well as of now anyways. And it should arrive to its destination by Monday, it says. That's the targeted date. Let's see if it happens. And what did I read today? Lots of crazy stuff actually. How about this first one? That was actually good. Apparently there was a child that almost got hit by a train, but he got saved. It says here, a good Samaritan. At Vangani Station of Central Railway, pointsman Mr. Mayur Shelke saved the life of a child just in the nick of time. He risked his life to save the life of the child. And you can see in the video, that's what it looks like. The child fell onto the train tracks, the train was coming, and then you see this guy dart from the background and basically get the kid out of there. Talk about a save, huh? I think with this video too, it's kind of interesting just to see the contrast in terms of people's instinct because for this person, when he saw the child fall down there, he immediately ran there to save his life. And I guess with the parents or whoever that was, I'm assuming is the parent that was walking the child, it seemed like from the video, as soon as the child fell into the track, they actually stepped back, I guess in shock. You would think it would be the parent that would lunge forward for us, huh? But then again, just could be just the shock factor and all. But fortunately, everything ended up okay. And with all that news in Ontario, where they initially gave police powers just to stop people at random, to ask them what they're doing and stuff, I guess to enforce a stay at home order, it was retracted afterwards due to things like the outcry and all that, where even the police said they're not gonna do that. I guess here in BC, we're gonna have some kind of travel ban and stuff like that too, according to this. Like this one here says, what you need to know about BC's new travel restrictions. Premier announces new restrictions to curb non-essential travels, vacations. And then more of them say here, what is a roadside checkpoint? What happens if I'm found traveling outside my health authority? Yeah, so apparently they're limiting your travel within your certain health region, for example, like the city of Vancouver. Although people are wondering, what the heck does that mean? What happens if people, I don't know, walk literally just like a block to the other city or going to work and so forth? Are you gonna stop them too? Say like, no, stay in there. To my knowledge, I think the purpose of this is for people traveling from other, let's say, provinces to come here to go to camping sites or ski resorts. But, but the way it's worded, it technically means almost everyone. And even like these articles, it says, you will not be able to do it. Former Solicitor General doubts BC can enforce travel restrictions. And the point it raises here in the article, it says, Premier Horgan attempted to differentiate or distinguish BC from Ontario. On the face of it, there is no difference in terms of granting police increased enforcement powers to do random checks. So basically, it's way too broad with the way it's written. They're supposed to announce it, I believe, on Friday, they said. But at the same time, if they do actually go through with it, imagine all the police you need to actually make this happen. I can't imagine that happening, honestly. What a waste of money in that sense. If you have everyone in every single corner, I don't know, the city randomly going and checking everybody. Okay, where are you from? What are you doing? Because I could imagine just for most people, they have to go to work and stuff like that too, right? So they'll go across various cities and all that. It makes me wonder how much thought do people actually put in before they come up with these, I guess, regulations or procedures. It's just one of those sitting on the table. Okay, it sounds good. Let's give it a try. Or do they actually somehow test it in some capacity themselves to see, oh yeah, it makes sense or it doesn't. And then I read this one, which dealt with things like drones at first. I thought it was more to do about things, for example, about access to the tech. I know in the US, I believe things like those remote IDs today actually should have been the day, correct? Where they actually implement the regulations, so to speak. But then reading this, apparently there's gender issues like with drones at first. I was like, what's this about? This one says, method to the madness of FAA push for gender neutral language about drones. Airmanned and unmanned among terms marked for replacement. The agency's drone advisory committee has been tasked with exploring how the FAA and the aviation industry as a whole can embrace gender neutral language rather than terms like airman and unmanned aircraft. This was actually a thing? I didn't know that, like in terms of this being an actual topic right now for drones and all that. So looking at it, I think it was this one here. It says, Drone Advisory Committee to recommend using gender-neutral language for drones. The Federal Aviation Administration has asked its Drone Advisory Committee, of which Trish is a member, to explore moving away from words like unmanned, manned, airman, and other gender-specific terms for drones as the agency and aviation industry look to attract a more diverse and younger group of people to the field. Trish said the panel was displaying leadership by taking on the task and helping to move forward a conversation that also was happening 
within the Department of Transportation's Women in Aviation Advisory Board and internationally at International Civil Aviation Organization. So what would you rename it to? And funny enough, I don't know if this is a coincidence, but I was reading this article on how apparently there's some schools, like this one saying, starting a K-12 classroom drone program where they want to teach students about drones for various reasons. And it says here, I guess, in terms of describing drones, it says, more K-12 students are introducing drones into the classroom as educators discover how useful unattended vehicles can be to teach and strengthen science, technology, art, engineering, and mathematics skills. So instead of unmanned aerial vehicles or whatever, it will be unattended aerial vehicles. Would that actually work? It just makes me wonder, is this really the priority? Because if they're talking about things like being accessible to things like the youth, did you know that a lot of the regulations, they actually ban kids from flying toys? I'm talking about toys by every stretch of the imagination because with the way it's classified in such a general and broad way, they treat it like a huge manned aircraft. Like here, for example, let's just say there's a 251 gram toy drone. It's actually illegal for that child to actually fly that because they treat it like a huge manned aircraft. As if you need like, I don't know, a driver's license and you're driving a car. There's no distinction between things like just say a Hot Wheels toy car that weighs like a certain amount versus a huge actual real car vehicle you drive on the highway. So wouldn't that be more of the concern in terms of I guess getting youth and stuff to use this? Actually, I personally never met anyone in person who's against let's say words that have the word man in there. For example, like sportsmanship. And I kind of don't understand how that specifically would discourage someone from doing a specific hobby or whatever it may be. I can see if people are constantly portraying things a certain way, that's a little different. Like for example, if you say like the drones, all they show is males using this and they say, for example, specifically, people would say, oh, a female, you can't do this for whatever reason. That's a little different than just having like the word man in there, so to speak. But then again, usually it's all about life perspectives. I've never had a debate with people like that before, so who knows? I'd actually be fascinated in that. Or am I just opening up a can of worms where that's opening up like some conversation where it gets into things like politics where nobody wins at the end. But for me, it's always having an open mind and trying to understand viewpoints in that way. That bird knew exactly who was here right away. Actually, one thing I noticed is that for the original Mini, the batteries on the controller actually never discharged for all this time. That must really kill the lifespan of it, huh?
Alright, see you guys later.